And this is a quick video about input processing and output within Visual Basic. Uh, there are plenty of other programs out there describing the concepts of a graphical user interface and details of this particular uh, IDE, so I'll let you watch those if you need to, but so uh, this is going to address just getting the input and output. You're going to want to use the toolbox. The most common tools you're going to use, you want to use a button to generate the event handler. That's going to be the trigger for the code happening. You can just double click it to add it to your form. Um, most commonly for input you're going to use a text box. That's where the user is going to enter the information to be uh, to be used in the program. And you want to let the user know to enter some information. So you need some kind of prompt and we'll use a label for that. So in this example, um, I'll also display the output on the form, and I'm going to put that in a label as well. You want to use a label for output because uh, that's something the user is not going to uh, change. This is just going to be output. You can also copy and paste controls, and you can drag around them like this. So I'm going to copy this label and this text box by doing Control C and then I'll do control V and I added those controls very quickly um, ordinarily you'd want to set properties on your controls as soon as you add them uh, so I'll just go back and, and add some uh, properties to these controls using the properties window if you don't see it uh, it's going to be in the in the view menu uh, most common thing you're going to change in the uh, and the label is going to be the text property and I'll just have this program be a simple one to add two numbers so the input is going to be two numbers the processing is going to be to add them and then the output is going to be the sum uh, I want to have the user know to click this button I'm going to change the text property of it It's also good to set the name property of the controls that you're going to use in code to help you uh, remember what they do. You don't really have to, but it, it's good to do. For the output, it's nice to use a label, but it's kind of going to be hard to see the label, especially when you take the text out of it. So what I recommend doing, I'm just going to hit delete to remove it, hit enter to make it change and I'm going to change the border style property to fix 3D and I'm going to change the auto size property to false. That's going to make it look real nice for our output. I'm going to add one more uh, label so that the user sees where the sum is going to show up. Okay, now we also want to set the text property of the form itself so that it doesn't just say form1, which is kind of tacky. Okay, so that's enough for our form design and for adding controls. Uh, we might want to also set the property of this label. so we know how to refer to it. I'm going to call it LBL sum. Again, you don't really have to do this, but it's going to make your code a lot easier to read. I'm going to set this to text num1. So I'm setting the text property on these, and you're going to see why when we get into the code view. Okay, now we need to create the event handler, so I'm going to double click on the button. And what do we want to actually do in this program? We want the sum of the two numbers entered to show up in this label. So we need to assign to the label sum. I'm just going to start typing LBL. That was, that was the name property I gave to that control. 
label sum, we want it to get the result of what's in the two text boxes. So you might be inclined to do something like this. Label sum gets text num1 plus text num2. All right, that's, what I, that's the name property that I gave to these two text boxes. Text num1, text num2, those are their name properties. And you see we get a squiggly line here. And so that doesn't work. It says operator plus is not defined for a Windows Forms text box. We can't add two text boxes together. That's what this message is telling us. We need to work with the text that's inside these text boxes. The text box is really a class. So the text box is an object. This is an object and we need the text property or the text field of that object. So we want text num1.text plus text num2.text. That's going to get us to the inside of the text boxes. Alright, now we've got another problem. It says string cannot be converted to label. Alright, by, by the same reasoning, we can't assign the result of this addition to a label. The label is the entire control. We want to assign the result of this addition to the text property of the label. Alright, no more squigglies. This looks like it's going to be happy, but you're going to see there's actually another problem. We'll run it and we'll figure out what it is and how to fix it. And you see that we, instead of adding, we got the result of putting those two strings together. It concatenated. All right, we've seen that before in our other programs and other programming languages. When two strings are added together, it concatenates them. We need to convert these strings to numbers. We need the computer to know we're working with numbers here. And in Python, we did that with uh, the word int. Um, we're going to do something similar in Visual Basic. We're going to do C int. We're going to convert it to an integer. And convert to an integer is a function. It accepts an object as an expression. The object as an expression we're sending it is text num1.text. And we need to convert to an integer textnum2.text. Now let's try it. And we get 33. And what happens though if we put in a decimal point? Because this is going to convert to an integer, we might not get the correct result. We get the correct result there, but what if we do still get the correct result? But here it's rounding up. It shouldn't really be 34. We're getting, it should be 33.9. So if you don't want it to round up and just give you an integer as an answer, you could also, instead of converting to an integer, you could do any of these conversion functions. We can convert to a decimal or convert to a double, which is a common data type used for um, numbers that have decimal points in Visual Basic. And these are things you wouldn't be expected to know. You, I would hope that you would know that it was treating that text as a string and it was using the plus to concatenate and that should have been enough information for you to search online to see how to convert a string to a number. And now if we test it again with any numbers, we get the correct result. 
All right, that should be enough to get you through some program exercises and we'll go from there.